Howdy folks, this is Leadhead and welcome to my first ever YouTube video. So I thought I'd make a quick explainer of how I drive data lines for 5 volt type devices such as WS2812s from a 3.3 volt source, in this case an ESP8266 off a single 5 volt supply without the use of conventional level shifters or voltage regulators. It's super simple and so far has been 100% reliable, with ESPs happily driving LED strings for weeks at a time without a single glitch. The secret is to understand what voltages your driven device recognises as low and high versus what your driving device can produce. If the driving device can produce a range compatible with the driven device, then the problem becomes one of simply offsetting voltages. For example, in the case of the WS2812s, a generic data sheet shows that for the data line, the minimum voltage required to recognise a high is 0.7 times the supply voltage, and the maximum voltage required to recognise a low is 0.3 times supply voltage. So, for a nominal 5 volt supply, the data line must be driven above 3.5 volts for a high and below 1.5 volts for a low. This is a difference, or hysteresis, of at least 2 volts. Similarly, for the ESP, the GPIO can produce a minimum digital high of 0.8 times supply, so 2.64 volts, and a maximum of 0.1 times supply for a digital low, so 0.33 volts. Keep in mind, these are absolute minimum and maximum values, so actual levels might vary a bit. For instance, in practice I've found that the ESPs generally produce a logic high much closer to supply, generally around 3 volts or so. The important thing to note is that the hysteresis of the ESP is greater than that of the WS2812. So, in theory, rather than shifting the ESP low voltage down and the high voltage up, we can simply offset both levels by the same amount, say about 1 volt, and still be in spec for the LEDs. So, what's a simple way of doing that? Turns out that rectifier diodes are ideal for offsetting voltages. The forward voltage drop of a common 1N4001 is somewhere around 0.7 to 1 volt, depending on manufacturer. This brings us pretty close. So what I did is I made up a little test circuit. Sorry about the dodgy diagram here. Basically I've got a 5 volt power supply that feeds the LED strip directly. Um, the black negative 0 volt, whatever you want to call it, also goes via a diode to the 0 volts of a Wemos D1 Mini, which has got the ESP8266. The effect of um, this is that because of the forward voltage drop of the diode, the uh, cathode side of the diode in this part of the circuit will be about 0.7 volts higher than the anode side. That means that what the Wemos sees as 0 volts is actually about 0.7 volts more than what the WS2812 sees as 0 volts. Um, I just grabbed a couple of diodes that I had, measured them up, one of them was 0.77 volts and the other one gave me 0.78 volts. So uh, similarly I also put a diode on the positive supply side and the reason is that I want to get pretty close to the 3.3 volts uh, supply voltage for the ESP so that I don't blow it up. Um, I measured the power supply actually as 5.25 volts, take away the 0.78 and 0.77, gives us 3.7 volts. Um, that seems to be pretty well within tolerances for ESPs. Um, they seem to quite happily run up to above 4 volts without exploding or letting out the magic smoke, so that's all uh, pretty good I think. I also put a capacitor across it just because everything I was fiddling around with uh, wires and test probes and so on uh, would, would cause a few problems on the uh, on the supply voltage, so then the ESP would reboot or whatever, so it caused a few issues, but once I put the capacitor in that was all good. So basically, um, yeah, what this means is that the ESP has got 3.7 volts supply, 
the WS2812 has got its roughly 5 volt supply. The 0.2 volts doesn't really matter that much. Um, and uh, we have a data line that goes from the ESP through to the WSs. The net effect of the diode on the 0 volt rail is that from the perspective of the, the WS2812, 0.77 volts is added to what the ESP puts out. In other words, for a logic low, the ESP puts out about 0.33 volts relative to its 0 volt rail. And this is seen as about 1.1 volts by the uh, WS2812, which is still well below its max of 1.5 volts for a logic low. And for a logic high, the ESP puts out at least 2.64 volts, which is seen by the WS as at least 3.41 volts, which is very, very close to the minimum 3.5 volts required by the WS for a logic high. Keep in mind, real-world measurements are that ESP GPIOs put out logic high levels of around 3 volts, and this would put us at about 3.7 volts, which is comfortably above that minimum. Failing that, you could always look around for diodes with slightly higher forward voltages to do the job. So anyway, I built a test circuit and took some measurements. Apologies again for the dodgy diagram. I'll try to do better next time. Zero volts on this graph is the supply zero, which is also what the WS2812 sees as its zero. All measurements were taken with respect to this level. Thanks to the series diode, the ESP zero volt line is 770 millivolts higher, which means that, as far as the WS2812 is concerned, 770 millivolts is added to what the ESP thinks it's putting out. Looking at the ESP's data line, I measured a low as 820 millivolts relative to supply zero and high as 4.47 volts. 820 millivolts is 50 millivolts above the ESP zero line, so well below the specification low maximum. Keeping in mind that the ESP is being fed 3.7 volts, I expected that the minimum high would be at least 3.73 volts. That is 0.8 times 3.7 plus 770 millivolts, and was happy to see that it was quite a bit higher than that. In fact, the GPIO is pretty much swinging from 50 millivolts to full rail, which is pretty impressive. So, how does this compare with what the WS2812 requires? Well, as you can see, low and high are firmly within specified limits, again calculated with respect to actual measured supply voltage, and the result is perfectly stable behaviour with nary a glitch. Anyway, hope you liked the video and that you can use the simple idea to make your own projects a little bit easier. Leave a comment and let me know what you think. Cheers!